Okay, who is this? Kenny Chesney. <laughs> Bless me. <laughs> I mean, he's probably done this song, but who did this? Who is this singing? He's not alive anymore. Who most famously did this song? I somebody that he's never even heard of. I bet he has. That's I've why heard, I thought maybe he'd uh, I've spit heard it right song out. Before for sure, but I don't remember who it's. By. You've never heard of John Denver? Yes, but I I, I wouldn't remember. John Denver, a guy who's very closely associated with this song, obviously, but a lot of people thought he was from West Virginia. We take me home, country road. The guy grew up in the American Southwest. I think California. He died in California. And crashed a plane he built. Ooh. Um, yeah, long time ago, by the way, too. Like thirty years, maybe. John Denver's been dead now. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, but I was reading about how the state of West Virginia. Of course, we have a lot of uh, bureau chiefs in the great state of West Virginia, the Mountaineer State. We've got Pam in Huntington. We've got John in Fairmont, Margo's in Peterstown, and on and on and on. Uh, they have passed a bill in West Virginia that will allow uh, people to distill up to five gallons of liquor in their own home. Okay. That's how worried states are or uh, or local people with their fingers in the liquor business. That's how worried they are about the increasing legalization of marijuana. Because you'll still get 90 days in jail in West Virginia for weed, I think. But they have uh, approved a bill that they expect will probably move forward uh, before it reaches the governor's desk that would let people make moonshine (laughs) in their homes under the banner of Appalachian history and heritage. So you listeners there in West Virginia, um, Mountain Mama, you can start. I mean, you know, you got to be careful with that stuff. You don't want anything blowing up. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of... uh, uh, people who make beer, uh, craft brewers and things like that. And if you uh, screw up a batch of beer, you just get some skunky beer, right, in your basement. But uh, you, see, you screw up some moonshine and uh, you might get something else. <laughs> so they're in West Virginia. I guess that's good news uh, for those of you uh, living there. Or if you're living there and perhaps not a native, this is good news in that it will maybe allow you to dull your senses enough to momentarily forget that you're living in West Virginia. (laughs) But it's a beautiful part of the country. I mean, I, you know, um, the only times I was ever in West Virginia is when I lived in Pittsburgh. But uh, you'd make a trip there every so often. You know, you'd go uh, party at WVU or something like that. Um, But they're going to be anybody 21 and over pretty soon. They pass this and they expect that it will. Party time. Party time. Uh, it is all but certain to become law there in uh, the Mountaineer State. Bridget Lynn is in today. Uh, Mary has gone all week. She's in Vegas with her family. Uh, we'll be off next week because I'll be in Florida for my daughter's uh, spring break. And this, th- so that makes this Thursday Pound Cake's last show. We announced at the top of the show that Pound Cake submitted his resignation. It gave me a, uh, a fake two weeks' notice, <laughs> and, uh, which turned out to be a four days' notice. But, uh, you know, people have been texting me nonstop because people are coming to today's show in waves. They weren't able to listen to the top. And, they, you know, oh my God, my husband's texting me and tell me it ain't so. And I said, it is so. I find Pancake's it- leaving for greener pastures. I didn't know the proper way to do it. Because, again, this was my first job out of college. And I, I, I know we're casual around here, but. I didn't know where this walk in like, hey, by the way, this is my, life. you know, I'm giving my two No, weeks. I like, thought it was very professional. I, 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 wish, I wish that I had uh, known a little bit uh, before it got sent to uh, our bosses uh, since I learned with them and I had no answer for them. But uh, that's just, uh, that's the minorest of uh, critiques. But no, the, the, would you like me to read his letter? Sure. Is this something? Make him read it. Is this something? Yeah, you should read your letter, Pound Cake. Oh crap! I gotta pull it up. Yeah, I'll read it. There's nothing in there that's. He sent it to Keith Kennedy. <laughs> I'm out this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't end it like that. Even if it had been that, I would have been like, "Well, there, there you go." 
So yeah, Keith Kennedy, Rob, Anthony, and then Alan. It says, hello, gentlemen. I'm sending this email to formally resign from my position at iHeartMedia Cleveland, effective two weeks from today's date. This decision did not come easy, but I have decided to move on to pursue other opportunities in my career. I want to express my gratitude for making this job such a wonderful experience. I have not taken a single day for granted in the last 8.5 years. Eight wow. and a half, half years. years. Mm-hmm. Dang, you're aging and us. You got, oh. And you got one raise that was mandated by the state. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. Over That's the- how this company does it. Over the course of my time here, I have learned so much from all of you and developed relationships that I plan to carry with me for a lifetime. Alan? You can tell this is his first job because this is the letter you write when you're leaving your first job because you don't realize yep. you're never talking to those people again, right? When you leave, very professional. This might written. be a, this might be a little different situation, but usually you move on, man. It's like sayonara. It's, yeah. This is like two weeks' notice. Thank you, bye. It's nothing you even plan, right? It's just how things lay out. Yeah, this but. is like the first time I'm quitting a job. Well, there was another job I had for like 90 days, but that didn't count. <laughs> but I, I, he's like, usually I get fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got laid off. Get to go on my own terms. <laughs> <laughs> no, guns of place. <laughs> yeah. uh, Alan, I am genuinely thankful for you sharing your platform and allowing me to be free and creative while pushing me to do better. Uh, thank you for always uh, for having confidence in me when I lack confidence in myself. I will never forget you being the first person to give me a shot when no one else would. I feel that now is the time to either sink or swim on my own. Uh, although my time is coming to an end, I would love to keep the lines of communication open. After all these years, I think of us like family, and I would like to keep it that way. Thank you once again for the opportunity to be a part of iHeartMedia WMS ACS Legacy. I wish iHeart the show and the station continued success for years to come. Warm regards, Cody Poundcake Helpful Brown. Man, that's pretty good. Wow, that was good. very well Now, did you, did you have Grammarly and spell check uh, doing the heavy lifting on this? Absolutely. I knew he did. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course he did. Knew he, well, not everybody does that. And I mean, you know, he certainly didn't have to do that. But I thought there would be a, a chance that you would read this and be like, this is the last thing he said to no, us. No, I mean, I was so shocked that... Uh, no, I, I certainly wasn't doing that. But well, what he had to say about you, Alan, was very nice. Well, he's got to say that, right? Well, I mean, he doesn't have to. He could have skipped over that up. part. He could have. Yeah, he could have. Could have just said, you know, as a whole, thank you. <laughs> See you later. WMMS <laughs> in our I Heart Cleveland. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Bye, hoes. Bye, hoes. Uh huh. That's right. I mean, right. okay, you're you're gonna realize how much you're loved though once you leave. Everyone is gonna come forward and just say how much they miss you, and you're gonna be missed on the show. And I hope that you will remember that. Like, you really did leave a legacy here. It's like Vincent Van Gogh. He was more famous after he died. So I'm like Van Gay. <laughs> True geniuses are never realized in their lifetime. You can uh-huh. Van Gogh right now after that. <laughs> now. Yeah. Like. DJ says, please wish him all the best in his new job and all his future gay adventures. <laughs> oh, Jess, vac- uh, as soon as I'm able to cash in my vacation time, I'm going to take a vacation. Oh, you see God. Homeland Security raided Puffy's house? Uh, yeah, Los Angeles and Miami. Oh, boy. What, because all these women are uh, and suing them? Women and men. And men, yeah. Ooh, the home of Sean Diddy Combs was raided by Homeland Security in connection with a federal tra- sex trafficking investigation. Oh, jeez. Oh, They've also raided his home in Miami. Wow, how about that? Right. You think he's colluding with uh, R. Kelly back in the day? They all used to run together. They Oof. were all cool. They Everyone would go to a Puffy party. That's all you would hear about. Puffy's all-white party. Um, if you don't wear all-white, then you're out. And it was on his... He lived on... What's the exclusive island in Miami? Like Fisher Island or something like oh, that? Oh, I have no clue. There's mm-hmm. like an exclusive island. Bridget would probably know. She has a <laughs> lot of connections. Yeah, where's it? Where's, I haven't networked the, my in, way to that in one. In the archipelago yeah, industry. Yeah, she knows. <laughs> there's, only a, a, how, there's an island in Miami that only has like... 15 houses on it or something like that. So. I like the I like the top stories, the way they break out the headlines, by the way, because this was breaking news maybe a half an hour ago. Homeland Security raids home, Holmby Hills home associated with Sean Diddy Combs. That's ABC7 LA. NBC News Network, Sean Diddy Combs accused of saying, TMZ, Diddy raid. <laughs> <laughs> the They're point. like, people are not coming here for, you know, uh, for, for uh, Peabody level journalism here. Diddy raid. Dang. I watched the Dark Side of the 2000s on Hulu yesterday, and they have a whole episode that's dedicated to the rise of like celebrity blogs and TMZ. Yeah, and man, what a, what a bunch of dirtbags! Well, because they got famous off OJ, right? Didn't uh, no, Har- no, Harvey no. Levin? Uh, no, TMZ came. A, they got famous from Paris Hilton 
Oh, uh, okay. So TMZ, I never knew what it stood for. Thirty mile zone. Thirty, 30 mile zone. Yeah. Around. I didn't know uh, that either. Around LA County, yeah. And mm. so they had footage of that, like he was like a, I think a Greek oil dude or something. I don't remember his name, but uh, Stavros something, not Halkius. It wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> the fat rascal that was running around with Paris Hilton. But I wish I had that. Fun very fact: funny. Yeah. He started TMZ. Yeah, yeah. No, but he. Paris Hilton was in his car, and he, like, crashed into a commercial vehicle and then, like, sped off, and they posted that, and it launched them right off the bat. Like, they were huge from the from day one. What, um, what streaming device is the dark side of the 2000s on? Um, Hulu. Hulu. It's a CNN yeah. show, though, right? I don't know. I, I, oh, okay. Maybe. Yeah, I but think But it was on Hulu, and it was... Th- that whole th- series is great. I'm not all the way through it. I got a few episodes left. But the, there's a two-part episode about shock jocks. And it's like Howard Stern, Opie and Anthony, yeah. and their rise and fall. And, like, Howard pivoting and becoming a softer, kinder, therapized uh, Howard Stern. And Opie and Anthony just becoming bitter nobodies. <laughs> and it's a tough, tightrope yeah, to walk, it, boy. It you can either get bitter or you can kind of grow up a little bit yeah. and pivot. Well, it's crazy what Howard Stern did and... He saw the the winds changing, and he made those changes before the Me Too movement began and stuff like that. Because if he hadn't made those changes before the Me Too movement, he would have been a victim of it. Well, but he also but, did. He also saw so many performers trying to rip him off. He yeah. was like, "This isn't going to end well." Right. I'm going to take the rap for somebody else's. Yeah. You know. Well, I, I watched the but, dark but even side. The stuff that he did. That, like, the woman that killed herself that was one of his rival's ex-wives. And then... John DeBella. Yeah. yeah. And then the way he went after Man Cow and his dad died. And he's saying that he wants to... Sex with his corpse. Have sex yeah. with his dad's corpse and all... Like, like wild, disgusting stuff. And people... He, he had such a loyal, rabid following that they're like, eh, it's what it that is right is now. Nuts. There yeah. was nobody else doing it. Yeah. All right, I might be into this show. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah. Did you watch yeah. The Dark Side of Comedy? I didn't watch that one yet. Yeah, I think that's a CNN thing, too. Yeah. Dave Foley narrated, or Vice TV did, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Vice. That's pretty good. It's Vice. It's like yeah. Tracy Morgan and Phil Hartman and mm-hmm. Sam Kinison and, you know. There's another one I've been seeing a lot that's- There's Dark Side I, of the 90s. There's all sorts of those right now, and they're- there's one. It's like about the Nickelodeon. It's like quiet. On oh, set. I watched that. Yeah. You did? I yeah. Did okay, that. I've been seeing that everywhere, and I know it's gonna ruin my childhood of like all these shows that I used to watch. Yeah. Because I heard that it's just disgusting. What? It's tough. People it's... did to these kids. No wonder why Amanda Bynes is like going crazy and yeah. like has all these mental issues because right. look what I feel like they're was. still like they say that Dan Schneider never like touched anyone, but you see videos of him like. Hanging on to Miranda Cosgrove and her like being like, "Can you get off me?" And like they say, there's never any inappropriate behavior sexually with him and the kid. But like, I feel of course, like they're gonna say that. Yeah, something's gonna come out. I feel like still like there's he's just such he's so. But is it a whole creepy. documentary about like now adults saying they took advantage of me when I was a kid? Because that's yes. dark, boy. Yeah, I it's real it dark. Well, I was watching that. But on a lot the of people flight. are watching it. I and it, like that's my snack watching that, it. That's what I had downloaded on uh, my phone to watch on the flight. And originally, someone sat down next to me, and it was like a 15 year old girl. I'm like, I guess I'm just staring straight forward the whole time because I'm not gonna watch this movie right. or this, this series. Yeah. Sit next to a 15 year old girl, and then she switched with somebody else, and so it was like, you're like, hey, want one yeah. of my earbuds? Yeah, and we can put our heads together and watch this. And well, so I can't find what streaming device is that one on because I I keep that seeing one's on it. Max. Max, okay. Yeah. All right. HB, I don't know. The I HBO I don't know app. I don't know if I do. Yeah, I keep seeing more of it on social media, on Twitter and Instagram. Well, like just the little Drake clips from Bell it. stuff like, is I, yes. really, really sad. It was like, like the it's... Josh and Drake. People were hating on the guy, yeah. Josh, for not coming forward and saying something sooner. And mm-hmm. then he put out a statement. I'm like, all right, I got to watch this show. Yeah. Uh, the Drake Bell stuff is really, really upsetting because mm. it was just... Like his dad had a hunch about the guy that was doing. I was going to say, where were all, where were the parents? So, in, not it, bl- I'm not I'm not at all did, blaming yeah. them. I'm I'm saying literally, like in this universe, where were the parents? And, in and this one, Drake Bell's dad was very very present, 
but the guy was able to manipulate Drake enough. His mom and his mom. They know that's what that's, yeah. they target kids with broken homes. The yeah. parents were divorced. His dad oh, they was, were. His okay, dad was managing his career, um, and then he was. And able then it's like to, a divide and conquer situation. Yeah, he was able to isolate Drake enough to where he was like, I don't like your dad. Your dad's stealing your money. Blah blah blah. You should have your mom manage you. And he knew that he could manipulate the mom, um, and so that's. Exactly so then they'd be like. Oh, we got this audition late at night because then he basically became the yeah. manager. He was like, "Let me drive." And he's you taking into him the to stadium. an auditions and be like, "Well, we're not gonna be done at the audition until about midnight. So what if he just stays the night at my house?" And the mom's like, oh, "Okay," because she fully trusts this guy. And that's when things started getting weird. And then Drake is just like, "Oh, I didn't know any of this is gonna happen." He's he's fifteen years old, sixteen years old at the yeah. time. He doesn't know how to. <clears throat> handle any of this and oof. it's oof, it's it's really sad it's like a dozen years ago we had Jeanette McCurdy on yeah remember she was I, I just hauled her in because she was in yeah. the building it was and before I was on the show was it yeah because yeah. she was on iCarly and uh, god her stories I mean her book is called I'm glad my mom died because it was like she just had such an acrimonious relationship with her mom who kind of forced her into performing well, and, and like a lot of the stuff with da- Dan Schneider is he was just really controlling like he loved the power he loved like being, a boy band guy. Yeah, being the god of these shows and wanted absolute like no pushback, anything like that. If you said anything even just a little bit critical of what was going on, you'd get isolated and then eventually fired and stuff like that. And Jeanette McCurdy was one of the ones that would kind of butt heads with him more than anybody else. And so he didn't like that, but you also had the really weird stuff that he'd make Ariana Grande do that was not on iCarly, but it would be, or not even iCarly. Sam uh, and Victoria Cat. Justice. Oh. It was, it, I think it was Sam and Cat vignettes or, but it was. It that was spun inter- off from that Victoria yeah, it was, show. Yeah. It was internet only stuff. So like there's this one scene where she's trying to squeeze a potato and it looks, it's a, it's not. Like a circular potato. It's yes. long and yeah. yeah. So and he she's like holding it up by her mouth, like trying to squeeze the juice out of this tomato. And then there's a lot of gags in the shows where it's simulated, you know, it's it looks like they're getting a facial kind of thing. Like Oof. A, yeah. I forgot it's, that's it's how Ariana real... Grande even got her start yeah. in her yeah. career. Yeah. I'm surprised the network I and mean like a forget, lot of foot stuff. Too. I was gonna say, forget what the guy wanted, forget what Dan Schneider wanted to do. You would think a lot of that stuff on camera yeah. wouldn't have passed muster with Nickelodeon. Well, well, well that's the thing, is like ever there was a lot of people that had like they're like, What are we doing here? And Dan Schneider's like, No, it's fine. It's not we're not doing anything wrong. It's just you know, just silly. We're wow. doing silly stuff. Like, yeah. yeah it's there's one where Ariana Grande is like laying with her head hanging off the bed, and then like pouring water on her face and it's, and neck. Oh and it's my like, gosh! Yeah, it's real. Now, is she in this documentary? Does she come out? She and doesn't speak say. Out? She doesn't say okay. anything. And but like they just show this stuff. These scenes, and, yeah. yeah. But then you also get the moment when Drake Bell is kind of revealed to be the one that was uh, assaulted on the the set. Dan Schneider's the one that went actually and comforted him, and nobody else did. So it's like people contain multitudes, you know? Oh, man. Oh, so he wasn't the guy who assaulted him. No, he didn't assault anybody. I see. No, he. that's what I'm saying. Dan Schneider didn't assault anybody. He was just— Turned a blind eye to what— he, But he didn't even know. Like that, Oh, that he guy, didn't? He didn't know. He legit didn't know. Oh, I thought know. people are— accu- I, thought I thought what he's, he's being like accused— guy, yeah. well, I thought what he was being accused of is that he knew and didn't do anything. No, no. He, like Jim Jordan. No. He he was more. Uh, from what I remember of the documentary, of course I watched it when I was it was like five in the morning and I'm super tired. Uh, he he just was a yeller and a screamer and like uh, made see. everybody like like verbal abuse, verbal abuse. Okay. And then you know he, you see him being like like doing weird things, like he's in a hot tub with. Amanda Bynes when she's a kid. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, like, he's fully clothed, and and it was more, like, power dynamic stuff. Yeah. Like, that's what he So he just kind of a do. creep, but yeah. nobody was like, this yeah. guy did awful things. Yeah, oh. he didn't do any of the— Oh, I misunderstood. And the, and the, with the the guy that did the last thing, like, it was— when As soon as they found out, he was gone. He was like, a guy, uh, yeah. like, a producer, or he was another actor? He was So he was on all that, and he was, a like, a, a coach, like, an acting coach wow. kind of thing. 
And so he would interact with a lot of the kids and, like, help them with their dialogue and stuff like that. That was his whole thing. And then – and he'd been in the business for a while. So he had all these other people that wrote character letters for him, yeah. like James Marsden and uh, a few other people. But, like, there there's some pretty big names that wrote character letters for him. Because they didn't have that experience. You're right. Yeah. But they also, like, oh, he's a great guy, but you but, don't know. But it also I mean. seems like they didn't know what, how deep and dark this trial was because it was at a time when things weren't getting exposed. Things weren't getting talked about. So they just thought, oh, this is a misunderstanding. They didn't know that there was actually somebody that – going on trial and testifying against him hmm. and yeah. saying, like, this is the stuff. He only got 16 Oof. months in jail. Oof. Jeez. I wonder why these people in these industries get away with things yeah. for so long. Because a lot of it's anecdotal or yeah. they came out the down the road. And, yeah, yeah, it's wild. Um, okay, I got to take a break here. I'll have